Hello, welcome back to the course on Audio Signal Processing for Music Applications. This week we're talking about the sinusoidal model and we are considering sinusoids in the frequency domain, in the spectrum. And more particularly, we are considering that a sinusoid is a peak, a spectral peak, and from which we can measure uh, the values of the sinusoid. So this is what we want to go over in this programming uh, lecture from a programming perspective, therefore developing some code that would allow us to measure the values of the sinusoid. And these are the equations uh, we presented in the lecture class to measure the frequency, amplitude and phase of a sinusoid using parabolic interpolation. So this uh, first equation is the, the way to uh, compute a parabola on the tip of a, of a peak and obtaining the refined uh, frequency value as a, this is a, as a location from 0 to n which is the FFT size then we can uh, obtain the frequency value in Hertz by multiplying by the sampling rate and divided by capital N and then we can plot the, the location value in the, uh, in the parabola and obtain the tip of it uh, which will be the interpolated uh, amplitude value and finally we can also get the phase value by reading the, the location of the frequency uh, maybe using a linear interpolation of that in the phase spectrum so that we get uh, a refined uh, phase value okay so let's uh, go to uh, text editor and in here I wrote some code uh, to actually do this uh, detection of a spectral peak. Um, so here uh, I first uh, imported some of the packages that I need, uh, like the NumPy and Matplotlib, uh, uh, the, the window from SciPy. Then I, uh, I go to uh, append uh, the, the directory from which uh, I have some uh, code that I'm going to use is specifically the DFT model, so the, our DFT implementation and a set of uh, utility functions that uh, I have in the uh, uh, SMS tools uh, package. Okay, after I have all these uh, packages, I can start uh, like reading uh, a sound file. So I read a sound file that includes uh, um, a sine wave of uh, 440 hertz, so I know exactly what frequency I should get. And then I uh, uh, declare some variables that uh, are going to be uh, useful for computing the DFT. So M is our uh, window size, so how many samples of the sine wave I, I'm going to compute. The N is the FFT size. And uh, T is a threshold that I will be using for uh, the peak detection. Okay? So then I can get the window. I get a humming window of size M. Then I read into uh, the, the file, sort of in the middle of the sound file, so I can just get M, capital M samples of the middle of the sound. And then I can compute the spectrum using the DFT and L. I return the magnitude and phase. And then I, I'm computing the, uh, the peak. Okay, so this peak detection, this is a function that is declared in the utility uh, functions. So let's go there. This is the peak detection function that has as input a uh, magnitude spectrum and a T, which is a threshold. The magnitude spectrum is just the array of uh, values, of amplitude values in decibels. And uh, T is the threshold in decibels that is going to be used uh, to consider the minimum value uh, uh, below which we are not going to uh, consider to have peaks. So the computation is quite simple. We check for three conditions in uh, the whole uh, magnitude spectrum. Uh, well, the whole we are discarding the initial value, value zero and the last value. So within the, between one and uh, the size minus one, we are looking for uh, the values that are above a threshold, okay, above T, the values that uh, are 
are higher than the previous and the next values, okay, so that it, they are a local maxima. And then we are considering the peaks as being the values that fulfill the three criteria. They are above a threshold, they are above the next value, and they are above the previous value. And then, uh, well, we add one in order to uh, undo uh, this uh, one that uh, the condition that we had. And it returns the locations, an array of peaks, of the locations of those peaks. So if we can go back to our code, okay, so we, uh, we call the peak detection, it returns the locations, and then uh, to get the magnitudes of those locations, we just read those values from the magnitude spectrum. To plot that, well, we have uh, these uh, lines for plotting in which we define first uh, frequency axis, so we're going to be able to see the x-axis in hertz. Then we plot the whole magnitude spectrum, um, so with the frequency axis and the magnitude spectrum, and we plot the peak locations on top of that. So we plot the locations uh, and the magnitudes, uh, and we, we're going to uh, plot an X on, uh, on that, uh, those locations okay, without any line, so we just see those, uh, those locations. So let's run that. Uh, we are in, these, uh, in the workspace of SMS tools and I have this test.py, so I can just run test. Okay, and this is the spectrum of the sinusoid. And of course, it has a main lobe uh, of the Hamming. So let's zoom into that location. So let's just go into just uh, the peak. Okay, and this is uh, the the peak of the sinusoid. Uh, we can see the cross, and uh, and we can see uh, some of the higher samples of the magnitude spectrum. Okay, so in here we can see that the cross is at location 429 hertz, more or less, or 430 hertz. That's clearly quite far from the 440 hertz. Why is that? Well, this is because our uh, size, the FFT size, was 512 samples. And uh, with 512 samples, we have quite a bit of distance between two consecutive samples. In order to compute exactly what is that distance, we can just do uh, the sampling rate, 44,100, divided by the FFT size, which was 512, and 86. This is the, uh, the distance in hertz between one sample, which is uh, here it says, 400 and uh, like around 28 and in here is uh, 515 kind of thing so this is the 86 samples distance between these two so to improve uh, the resolution we can now increase uh, the FFT size so in here the N let's uh, make it four times bigger for example let's make it to uh, 2048 samples so this should give us better a frequency resolution. Let's try that. So we save that. And in here, well, uh, let's remember uh, this uh, plot. So we can now, if we uh, run again, and we zoom into uh, the tip of the spectrum. OK. OK, yeah, we can see that uh, there is more samples now. And in fact, if we even zoom more, okay, we can see that, uh, well, now the tip, the peak, has been uh, computed to be uh, around 430 hertz, okay? And clearly the distance between two consecutive samples has reduced. So in fact, it should be four times smaller. If we compute that, uh, we can just compute uh, 44, 100, uh, divided by 2048, so now it's uh, 21 uh, hertz, the distance. But still is uh, not the frequency we would like to have. It's a little bit far. In fact, uh, this, uh, this 21 hertz resolution 
uh, is, uh, is not ideal. So what we're going to do is to do this parabolic interpolation. So in the util functions uh, file, there is this uh, peak uh, interp uh, function that performs parabolic interpolation on this location that uh, we have found. So from the magnitude spectrum, the phase, and the locations that it found, this local maxima, this function uh, computes the interpolated values. So from the three highest peaks um, of, the, of each uh, local maxima, the actual local maxima and left and right uh, values, it performs the parabolic interpolation to refine the frequency and find the center of the parabola. Then it finds the uh, tip of the parabola, the, the magnitude of it. And then it uh, uses the location to uh, look into the phase spectrum and perform some linear interpolation because the, the phase in the, during the, this value should be quite flat. And it performs a linear interpolation to find the actual phase value. And it returns these three. Now let's uh, get these three output values. So let's copy them and put them in uh, our uh, little program. So we will uh, obtain these by calling the peak interpolation function. So let's copy that too. Copy and we put it here. Okay, so this is our peak interpolation function. No need to compute the Pmax. So now it returns the lo interpolated location, interpolated magnitude, and interpolated phase by calling the peak interp and sending it uh, the magnitude phase and location values. So now we can plot the IP log and IP Mac. And uh, okay, so let's see if we improve these, uh, these um, plot now. So that we had the peak at 430 hertz. See what we can do with now this interpolation. So let's run again a uh, test. Okay, it complains about peak inter because it's part of the package uh, UF. So I have to specify that it comes from there. And let's run it again. Okay, now let's zoom into uh, the, the tip of it so we can see how it does. Okay, and we can zoom a little bit more. Okay, so here we see the values we had before, so the tip before it was uh, this uh, tip, so it was uh, like around 430, and now it has found the cross is in between these two locations, so it has moved uh, the, the tip because it considers this uh, the tip of the parabola, and now the cross is closer to uh, 440. Still is not at 440. In fact, it's around 439 or so. So we are still one hertz kind of difference, but definitely it's much better than we, what we started with. Okay, uh, so that's basically I wanted to show. Uh, so with uh, this code, uh, we can uh, analyze a spectrum of, uh, of a sound and identify the spectral peak locations that are within uh, that spectrum. Of course, is the, if the sound is more uh, complex than a sine wave, and the threshold is also lower, it will not just find one single peak, it will find uh, many peaks. Okay, let's go back to the, the slides. And um, Okay, so we have been uh, using the sinusoidal model and part of it, the concept of peak detection, and uh, using some of the packages of uh, Python, NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, and some of the functions available in the SMS tools uh, package, we have been able to uh, measure uh, the, the spectral peaks of, uh, of a sound. And uh, with that, we are uh, now ready to go to the next stage, which we'll be uh, talking about in the next programming class of actually handling uh, more, um, more real sounds and both analyzing and synthesizing uh, these uh, sinusoids. So I hope to see you next class. Bye-bye.